hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is montoya all right so in today's tutorial i'm going to be teaching you how to do a uh, infinity top now you can combine this tutorial with any one of my skirt tutorials i have a high low maxi circle skirt half circle skirt i have my flat front elastic back toya skirt i have my gathered uh, maxi skirt so you can use any one of those tutorials and combine it with this infinity top tutorial because because what I'm teaching you how to do is create the ties and attach it to the waistband. So I'll be demonstrating how to attach it to a full flat waistband that's all the way around. And also uh, for those of you doing my flat front elastic back, I'll show you how to attach it to the flat front waistband. All right, so for this tutorial, you're going to need your fabric. I'm using this beautiful Ankara fabric that I got from Ankara and Lace. I will link them down below. They have lots of Ankara selections for you to choose from, multiple colors, multiple options. You're also going to need some interfacing for the waistband, and you'll need standard um, sewing supplies like pins, fabric scissors, seam ripper, and of course some coordinating thread. To make my infinity dress, I'm using four and a quarter yards of fabric. So four and one fourth yards of fabric is what I use to create my dress. So typically when I make um, maxi skirts, my flat front elastic back or my flat uh, waistband skirts I used three yards so in addition I needed one and one fourth of a yard to create the infinity ties all right before we begin cutting out our fabric we need to take our front bust measurement so I like to bring it from um, about armpit like my armpit like right on the side and bring it around to um, under my underarm armpit underarm whatever you want to call it uh, yeah, so that's how I measure my uh, front bust and make sure that you're that you're putting your measuring tape around the fullest part of your bust. So after you have measured that, go ahead and write that number down and we're going to use it next. All right, now that you have your width measurement, now you can lay out your fabric. Right now I have the right sides facing together. I have the selvage edge with the selvage edge here and I have my fabric on the fold over here. Now what you want to do is take your width measurement and starting at one end, um, measure down your width. So for me, mine is 11 inches. So what I'm going to do is measure over 11 inch width and I'm going to make a cut. Now I have a piece that measures 11 inches wide and let's see about 46 inches long altogether. All right, so we need a total of four of these because two pieces make one tie. So we use two for one and then two for another. So I'm going to use my same piece and I'm going to place it right on top of my fabric. You can use it to cut out your next piece of fabric or you can just measure and cut again. I'm just going to measure and cut again. So after you're done cutting out your ties, you should have a total of four. All right, so I'm going to be demonstrating two different ways to attach the ties. One for a full flat waistband, which for multiple tutorials that I have on my channel, I have uh, tutorials that have flat skirts that have flat waistbands all the way around. And I'm also going to be demonstrating for my Toya skirt, which is the flat front elastic back. If you have already been following along on my channel, creating any of the skirts, then you have 
the flat waistband already done but if you do not I will briefly go over it so the length of the waistband is your waist measurement plus two inches one inch is for ease and the other inch is for seam allowance so that's how you get the length of the waistband now the width I love a two inch waistband so at this current moment this width is five inches and then after taking out the seam allowance um, it brings it down to the two inches with a flat front elastic back skirt um, you are just going to use the length that we used in the measurement guide for the the length of our waistband so use that measurement from the measurement guide next thing that we need to do so when doing an infinity skirt the waistband needs to be cut into two pieces so currently my waistband is five inches in width for both of the for both of the waistbands now we only need um, a three inch width since we have to cut two pieces so what I'm going to do instead of creating a new pattern piece I'm gonna just use what I already have so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to cut out I'm not going to cut I'm going to mark out two inches right, so I'm going to mark off two inches so I measure two inches down and I'm going to make a mark Now I'm going to use that two inch line as a fold line. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it along that line. Now my waistband measures three inches in width and then my length is still the same. It's still my waist measurement plus the two inches. That's my length. And then for my flat front, I have the width of my waistband is three inches and my length is what I determined on the measurement guide for my front waistband length. All right, so for the flat front, we need two pieces. So right now I have my fabric with the selvage edges together on this side and my fabric is on the fold here. And I've just placed my pattern piece in a spot that, uh, that I like to be my waistband. So I could put it towards the edge here, but I'm putting mine more towards the center um, because I like this area for my waistband. All right, so I'm just going to pin in all four corners and then cut this out. All right, once you have it cut out, don't forget to mark your center front because we will be needing that later. So just make a snip. All right, so for the full waistband, right now I have uh, two layers. I have the selvage edge to selvage edge together over here and I also have selvages to selvages on this edge here to give me a long enough length for my waistband. So here's the raw edge and I've folded my fabric over. Now I'm going to pin this down in place and cut it out. Alright, after you're done cutting out the waistband, be sure to mark the center front because we will need that. If you don't have the waistband already made with the center front notch all you need to do is fold the waistband in half and right where that fold is make a snip and that is your center front next grab two of your tie pieces we're getting ready to do a French seam 
So what you want to do is put the wrong sides together. I know that's different, but put lay the wrong side of one of your ties with the wrong sides together and then pin along the short edge. All right, now we're gonna take this to our sewing machine and stitch this up. Now line up the edge with one fourth of an inch seam allowance, lower your needle, begin sewing, back stitch. Now continue sewing until you get to the end and back stitch again. All right, now take this to your iron and press the seam going towards one of the ties. All right, after you have pressed your seam allowance going towards one of the ties, now fold it so that now the right sides are together. And go ahead and press along the seam allowance here. Now we're going to do a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance to hide that seam inside and it will be nice and you'll have a nice clean finish. Now line up the seam with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Lower your needle, begin sewing, back stitch, and keep sewing until you get to the end and back stitch again. Now press your seam going towards one side of the ties. All right, so I went ahead and finished off both long edges of the tie and one short end. And then for the fourth, the other, the second short end, I just left a, a raw edge because it's going to be hidden in the waistband. Um, but if you do not have a serger, I will show you how you can hem so that the raw edge will be hidden. So first things first, if you do have a serger and you are able to finish off your raw edges, what you can do is take your uh, seam gauge or take an index card like me and fold up the edge 3 eighths of an inch with your iron and press. And you're going to do that on both of the long edges and then one of the short edges. You are going to do that. Now if you do not have a serger and you uh, want to hide that raw edge, what you can do is take the edge, fold it up to meet the five, to a, um, and do a 5 eighths of an inch seam line on your index card. Fold it up to meet that line and press. And you would do 5 eighths of an inch on both of the long edges and one of the short edges. Then after you have pressed it up that 5 eighths of an inch, what you're going to do is now open it up, fold the edge to meet that crease, and then fold again. That is going to hide the raw edge. So do which option works best for you in the sewing materials, the sewing machines that you have. All right, now I'm on the right side of my fabric. My hemmed edge is facing towards the wrong side of my fabric. I have the edge lined up with one fourth of an inch. We are all lining our edge up with one fourth of an inch, whether you did a narrow hem or if you only turned up one time all of us are uh, sewing using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now lower your needle, begin sewing and back stitch and you're going to continue sewing until you get to the end and back stitch again. Now go ahead and repeat this process on the other long edge and then on the short edge also sewing using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance 
Once you are done with your tie, sewing all three edges, you can take it to your iron, give it a nice press, and then repeat this process on your other tie. All right, the next thing that we need to do is interface our waistband. So what you want to do is take your waistband, turn it to the wrong side, facing up, and then you want to take your interfacing, place it right on top, and you want the uh, glue dots, which is the bumpy side, to be facing the wrong side of your waistband. Um, so you want it to be the full waistband. The full waistband is covered in interfacing. Then what I like to do is spritz a little bit of water on top. Then I take my iron, hold it for 10 to 15 seconds, and then I do that all the way across until it is fused. Then I turn it over to the right side and give it a press on top. Go ahead and do that for both pieces of your waistband. Interface both pieces on the wrong side of the fabric. All right, now it's time to attach our ties to our waistband. So I'm going to be modeling that on the fr flat front waistband and also the full waistband the full flat waistband. So the first thing that you want to do is grab a pin and find your center front notch that you made and you can put a pin there to help yourself. Alright, for the flat front waistband what you want to do is from each edge you want to measure over half an inch and place a pin. So from this side, I'm measuring over half an inch and I'm placing a pin there. From this edge, I'm measuring over half an inch and I'm placing a pin there. Now, for the full flat waistband, what you are going to do is take the edge of your waistband, fold it to meet your center notch, now the edge is lined up with the center front. Now where this fold is, you are going to place a pin there to mark this point. The same thing on the other side. Take the edge and fold it to meet your center front point. Along the fold, Take a pin to mark this point. Now for our flat front waistband, within these pins is where we will be attaching our ties. For the full flat waistband, within these pins here is where we will be attaching our infinity ties. Alright, now grab your tie. What you're going to do is find the edge that we did not find the edge that we did not narrow him or that we did not him at all. Find that edge. All right. Before we place our uh, before we connect our tie to our waistband, what you want to do is take the edge of your tie, fold it in half. And at that fold, go ahead and make a snip. Okay, we're going to be using that later. Now you're going to, this edge is going to be lined up with the edge of the waistband. So now take one end and line it up with your pin. The right sides are facing each other, so the right side of the waistband, the right side of the tie. And I'm going to line up the edge with that pin and now I'm going to place a pin to secure that. Now with the other edge, what you want to do, it depends. If you're a person who um, maybe you uh, want a deep V on your for your infinity dress, then you're going to line up your edge with the center front pin. That's going to give you an open gap uh, in the chest area. Now if that's something that you do not want, then you want to begin to move 
this edge past your center front point. So it just depends on you. So if you're a person that wants less cleavage, then you will want to go to half an inch, one inch, two inches, um, or if you want yours to go the full maximum of what it can go past the center front, you can do that. I, for myself, I'm going to do one inch. So I'm passing up my center front point by one inch. And now I'm going to line up the edge there and place a pin. All right, if you're doing the full flat waistband, you're following the same process uh, as I am doing here. You're also staying within the pins. So I won't be doing um, an additional step or anything. It's the same exact process for both of the waistbands. All right, next for your tie, we, if you have excess fabric left over for your tie, we are going to make a pleat if you decided not to extend yours the full length. So what you want to do is find that snip that we made at that fold earlier. Okay, I'm just going to put a pin there so you all can see. And what you want to do is bring your fabric, this pinch your fabric, make sure that it's laying flat on both sides, pinch it so that this notch is centered. Alright, so it's flat on this side of my notch, and now it is flat on this side of my notch. So I've pinched out all of the excess fabric. Now with this we're going to create a pleat. So what you want to do is now take the pleat and you want to make it this excess fabric. You want to um, lay it down going towards the side seam. So remember this is the center front, this is the side seam. Lay that excess fabric going towards the side seam. Now grab a pin and pin that down. Now grab your second tie, also working on the edge that we did not hem. You need to mark the center. So fold it in half, line up the ends, and where that fold is, make a snip. What you're going to do, and the right sides are still facing each other, take this edge, line it up with that uh, outer pin, Now find your center front pin. So for me, that was the uh, green one. Now I'm going to pass up my center front pin one inch because that's what I did for the other one. So whatever you did to one side is what you need to do for the other side. So I'm passing up one inch and now I'm placing a pin to hold that and down. Now find that snip that we made in the tie Place a pin there to signal that for yourself. And pinch out the excess fabric to create the pleat. So I'm going to take that center point and pinch there. That's where I'm pinching. Now I want to make sure that it's flat on both sides as I'm pinching. All right, once I have that fabric pinched out, of the tie. Now I'm going to uh, lay, lay the pleat going towards the side seam. And I'm going to pin that pleat in place. Alright, now grab your other waistband piece and you're going to lay that with the right side facing down. So right now, it, you know, it is facing the wrong side of the tie, but it is facing the right side of your other piece of waistband. 
So lay that on top and then pin that in place along the top edge. You can remove the pins that are already there or you can add, just add more. I like to just add more so things aren't shifting and moving around. I especially don't want that pleat to come out so I'm just going to leave it be. Might be a lot of pins but it's all good. We can just take them out as we sew. All right, now let's take this to our sewing machine and uh, stitch this down in place. All right, so for both waistbands, that's what we need to do. You need to stitch across the entire waistband, stitching across the entire waistband. All right, now line up the edge with half an inch seam allowance. Lower your needle. Begin sewing, back stitch, and continue sewing until you get to the other end of your waistband. Alright, so the next thing that we need to do is press this seam allowance. So we have a the front of our waistband and the part that's uh, the back of the waistband. You want to press the seam allowance going towards the back of the waistband. You can tell which one is the back piece because as I look at my front I can see that this is the right side of my tie. So I know that this is going to be the front part. This is the piece that everyone is going to see. This part of the waistband is going to be hidden inside um, yeah this, this part is going to be hidden inside, touching, touching, this is going to be touching our body. This is going to be out so people can see. So, after you have figured that out, press the seam allowance going towards the, the back. And make sure that your ties stay up here because we're getting ready to then, after we're done pressing that nice and flat, we're going to do an understitch. So sewing close to that stitching line within the seam allowance and on top of this back piece. That's going to keep this back piece from rolling up as we wear it. All right, now it's time to do our understitch. So make sure that you have your tie is over here and also the front part of the waistband is on this side. You do not want to be stitching on top of your ties. Um, yeah, you just don't want to be stitching on top of your ties. We are stitching within this seam allowance and also on the back part of the waistband that is hidden on the inside. Alright, so you want to stitch about one-fourth of an inch away from the seam. So begin sewing, back stitch. And continue sewing until you get to the other end of the waistband. Alright, now the last step to finish up the waistband is to now fold it over and give it a nice press. And you are all done with your infinity top. You can finish it, you can finish up your dress. Uh, attaching the waistband to the rest of your pattern pieces as followed in the tutorial. So if you're following along on one of my tutorials, you attach the waistband the same exact way that I do um, in the tutorials here on my channel and also for my Toya skirt tutorial, follow the same exact uh, process for finishing the skirt. One thing, one tip that I do have, because these ties, they are a bit long. So one thing that you can do so that they don't get caught up in anything is you can make a loose, a loose slip knot. That way as you're handling your waistband, these things aren't dragging all over the place because that is what tends to happen because they are so long but you will be able to tie it amazing ways. But if the length is not great for you, feel free to cut it. But I personally love this length. All 
right so first things first position your dress uh, where you need it to sit and then take your ties throw them over your shoulder and then fluff it out over your shoulder now take the tie and begin twisting it all right once you have a good twist now bring it over to the other side and bring it in front of you and just let it sit there now take your other one and begin twisting it now take it bring it over to the other side all right and if you need to add some you want the the ties to be twisted uh, as you cross them over so if it's not twisted enough just keep on twisting all right once your twisting is good now cross it bring it to the back I can feel that I need to twist some more now bring it back behind you and tie now I usually then ask somebody you know to help me like you know what it looked like in the back so that they can help me out um but if you don't have anybody you know just make it work another thing that I like to another all right another style once again throw them over your shoulders and then right at the um right at the shoulder begin twisting this one requires lots and lots of twisting so you twist twist and then cross it over so I'm just gonna rest it there for now and then I'm going to begin twist twisting the other side at the shoulder as well and make sure you um, fix it along your bust line around your bust how you want it to sit so don't twist it too much and twist it twist it twist it and bring it over to the other side all right so now you should have them uh, crisscrossed in the back and make sure that you twist it real good I don't think I twisted this one uh, that great but you get the idea make sure it's twisted and then cross it in front also make sure that you twist it real good bring it to the back and then tie then adjust where needed Alrighty, everyone, that concludes the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below if you have any questions. I will link the fabric that I use down below. I wanna thank Ankara and Lace for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out because they have some great quality fabric. Um, I also, from them, I have this beautiful, y'all know, if you follow my blog, you know how I feel about yellow. I love yellow so much. And so I'm getting ready to make a duster with this fabric that is also uh, from Ankara and Lace. The fabric is so nice. It has a nice weight to it. Um, so yeah, I'll be making a duster. I have a duster course coming in the fall. Uh, so yeah, be on the lookout for that with me using this gorgeous fabric. And uh, don't forget to click the bell so you can get all of my notifications for the things I have coming up on my channel. All right, until next time.